Hello and welcome to Eye on Africa, France 24's program focused on the continent. I'm Charlie James and these are the headlines. A political activist in the Democratic Republic of Congo dies in a suspicious fire. Luke Kalula founded a pro-democracy movement strongly opposed to President Joseph Kabila remaining in power. For the first time, a TEDx conference is held in a refugee camp. France 24 talked to speakers and attendees in Kenya, sharing ideas on how to make life better for displaced people. And despite the improving economy, Ghana continues to see citizens risking their lives to leave the country. Look at why efforts to end migration are falling on deaf ears. And we begin in DR Congo. This weekend, pro-democracy activist Luke Kalula was killed in a suspicious fire at his home in the city of Goma. His youth movement, Struggle for Change, suspects foul play. Kalula dedicated his life to teaching Congolese about their rights and how to use the power of peaceful protest. Nicholas Germain looks at the political movement he created in the DRC. Can we talk to you? Can we please talk to you? Luke Kalula was always leading the Lucha demonstrations. As a result, he was often arrested and thrown into jail. The 33-year-old activist died this weekend in a fire in his home. His friend said it was a suspicious fire because there had been a power cut that night in his district. Lucha is a pro-democracy movement that says President Joseph Kabila must step down because his official mandate ended in December 2016. Now the election is to be held in December 2018. Luke Kulula was one of Lucha's founding members. The aim of our movement is to encourage people to be more demanding, because that way we will be governed not by imposters, but by rulers who are efficient and accountable. With his friends, he founded Lucha six years ago. Initially, they were asking for better access to water and electricity. We're free to choose what Congo will look like tomorrow. But we are afraid of assuming that responsibility because freedom is a huge responsibility. Luke Lula had encouraged many young Congolese to join Lucha. We spoke to one of them. I've lost a mentor. I've lost an elder brother. I've lost a great friend. I've lost my source of motivation. I've lost someone who was very special in my life. I think I'm among those who must now continue Luke's struggle for a new Congo. Luke Kalula's friends are calling for a transparent investigation with the help of the UN. They want to know exactly how and why one of Congo's most passionate pro-democracy activists died this weekend. Madagascar's president announced Monday that a new government has been appointed. A court ruling required that a consensus administration be put in place in efforts to resolve a crisis sparked by electoral reform last month. The Indian Ocean nation has been rocked by protests, which started against electoral laws before snowballing into demands for the president to step down. For the first time ever, a TEDx conference was organized in a refugee camp. The goal of the TED organization is to share ideas that can change the world. And France 24 was there in Kenya this weekend at the Kakuma camp, where 15 speakers came to share ideas to make life better for refugees. It's the last prep time for Mary. In a few minutes, she'll be on stage in front of several hundred people. This South Sudanese woman, who came to Kenya as a refugee at just four years old, is an ambassador for girls' education. Feeling nervous, but I'm feeling okay. At long last, somebody's going to hear the story of the refugees, and that's what I really want. I'm really excited. After her mother's death, she had to fight to stay in school. In the mentality of my community, only the boy child counted. And for that reason, I knew this was the end of me. In the audience, watching Mary and 14 other speakers, diplomats, business people, some refugees from the camp, and tens of thousands of people following the conference live online. I thought the TED stage is really powerful, and why not bring a TEDx event to a refugee camp? Um, and allow the refugees to have their voices heard. After her talk, Mary steps out of the school where the conference was held. Two months ago, she left to study in Rwanda. Now back in the camp where she grew up, she feels uncomfortable. 
My dream is to come back to the camp and see no camp and see people back at home. A few hundred meters from here, a giant screen is installed so that Kakuma residents can watch the conference. But many don't see the appeal of the event. I can see people, they are trying to talk about their life, how they survived, the, the love that they passed in. But I never heard something that just can make me to be happy. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees says the day drew attention from around the world and raised awareness of the plight of refugees. Morocco's King Mohammed VI hosted Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari for a two-day official visit in Rabat. Monday, the two leaders oversaw the signing of an agreement to move forward with the Atlantic Project, a pipeline that will transport gas to Morocco along the Atlantic coast. Intended to serve 12 African countries and about 300 million consumers, the project's budget is estimated at 20 billion U.S. dollars, but opposition associations say it will cost much more. A diplomatic standoff Monday has left more than 600 migrants stranded in the Mediterranean Sea between Malta and Italy. The charity-run ship Aquarius is carrying migrants rescued from flimsy smugglers' boats during a series of operations Saturday. After Italy and Malta went back and forth Monday refusing to take the ship in, Spain stepped up and offered a harbor. But the voyage to Valencia will take at least two days of sailing, an uncertain feat for the ship carrying more than 100 children, seven pregnant women, and people suffering from hypothermia. Many African migrants leave their home countries because of poor economic prospects. But in Ghana, a nation with one of the highest rates of growth in the world, thousands still seek to cross the border each year. Despite campaigns trying to warn of the dangers, some people see no other chance for a different life. Ghana is predicted to have the fastest rate of economic growth in the world this year, but many still look to North Africa and beyond for prosperity. Here in Sunyani, a new information centre has been set up to dissuade them. We have documentaries, pictures of what transpired there. We use all those things to educate them and to tell them that it is not easy. Even on, in Libya, let alone even getting to Europe, it is still not easy as they think. Horror stories, though, don't put off people from attempting the treacherous journey across the desert. Ernest, a car mechanic in Dorma, spent 20 years in Libya and wants to go back, despite the dangers. Tell us, dangerous. But dangerous here in Ghana is the same dangerous. Because uh, you don't work. Why you stay here? I have children and uh, child and my mother and family. But I know the danger. But you go there, because they don't go, where is the money, or where is the work? Albert graduated five years ago and hasn't been able to land a steady job. Like his own father and brother, who were also in Libya, he's saving up to make the journey north. If you know that you are from poor background, the only thing you could what, do is to, what, to be there so that you can change the family, you can change yourself, if only you don't die or you don't draw in water. Ghana's government recently launched a program to get 100,000 young people into work. Like many of his friends, Bismarck has already applied. It's a program for the graduates, and the maximum this and, um, pay you are going to earn is 700 Ghana City. I think that one is the best approach for the government to sustain the unemployment situation in Ghana for a while. President Akufoado has said it's time to prove to the world that Ghana and Africa can grow without foreign aid. But first, he'll have to convince all his people to stay. And finally, as World Cup fever rises across the globe, football squads have been making their way to Russia. Waved off by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Egypt's team and its captain, Mohamed Salah, arrived at their new home base of Grozny in Chechnya. At the squad's first training session in Russia, the Chechen president joined, bringing star player Salah to the pitch in his private car. Salah says he is well on the road to recovery from his shoulder injury and is hoping to feature in Egypt's opening game against Uruguay on Friday. That's all for this edition of Eye on Africa, but do stay with us. There's more news coming up next here on France 24.